Mass Rama, welcome to Property Insights, mate. Thanks for having me, Mark. Srama Group, Gold Coast, Buyers Agency. Got it? You got it, mate. Right. That's it. We're going to talk about the Gold Coast in a sec because yep. um, it's a pretty big joint. Um, buyers Agency, how long have you been a buyer's advocate or a buyer's agent? And what does that mean? Mate, I've been a buyer's advocate, I guess, since uh, 2020 we launched. It's pretty much smack bang in COVID. I've been in the industry since 2016 after I retired from playing professional sport. And, uh, mate, basically, unlike a seller who, uh, unlike a real estate agent who works for the seller, mate, we predominantly work for the buyer exclusively. So uh, we hold their hand through the process. And, mate, I find two biggest value add points we get access to property they don't get access to off market. And, uh, mate, a lot of people are time poor now. So they're leaning on us to do the heavy lifting. That's interesting. Um, only the other day, one of my sons was saying to me that, uh, he wanted us to buy his mum a property. His mum got a bit of money, so we're going to buy a property. And um, it's my ex-wife, but my son's saying, Dad, we probably should just get a buyer's agent to do it for <laughs> us. And uh, Because, you know, we don't have time. Mm. Plus, we don't know the market. And, uh, and you know, 10 years ago, I thought buyer's agents, who the fuck would use a buyer's agent? I'd just go and do it myself. But it seems as though, as you just said, people have become time poor. I think mm. we're more busy now than we've ever been in our, our life, which sort of, sort of plays into your hand a little bit as a buyer's agent, as a business. Mm. Is that something you're experiencing? Mate, 100%. When I got into the industry, when I finished professional sport, I was actually a real estate agent. Obviously, for the vendor. For the vendor. And I don't know, i just seen this huge gap because, uh, I mean, in Queensland, we're a bit more behind the, you know, a bit slower. I've seen them popping up in Sydney and Melbourne. Obviously, in America, they're, they're used heavily there as property brokers, but... Mate, I'd have the buyer asking me, like I'd have that good rapport and they'd sort of say, man, what what should I pay? And, um, you know, and, and I obviously want to help the buyers, but at the end of the day, mate, I was getting paid from the seller. So we used to do training. I was uh, working at McGrath as a sales agent. We did training on how to, you know, put buyers against each other to lift the purchase price, so all these little tactics and things like that. So, um, yeah, I just love working with the buyers and I thought, I'll, I'll get on that side um generally actually work work for them and um yeah what i noticed on the gold coast especially huge gap there's probably only three or four of us active and there's like there's on the gold coast yeah yeah and there's thousands of agents you just explain that how it works i mean because you know you guys might even buy something off market you don't necessarily mm. have to go and buy something that is on the market um you can but you might buy something that's off the market so you always keeping tabs on what's up for auction what didn't sell what's been in someone's window for a long time i mean how do you get your intelligence in terms of what's going on in the property market yeah mate the three three main pillars i always like to target is um on market pre-market and off market on market the stuff on domain and real estate.com one thing i'm noticing in particular right now mark is things are sitting a bit longer if the vendors aren't educated from their sales agent and we're snapping up a few deals we we purchased one on the weekend probably 120k below what next door sold for in december because they just missed the mark and we executed on that it was at 80 days on the market kind of thing so we snapped that up so what do you do though though what, what, what so you're right you're watching something's so been 80 days on the market didn't sell what what do you do you ring up who yeah so the agents we basically with those on market ones you want to hit the agent day it launches mid campaign and and when it gets if you're still noticing uh it's there it's just around having those key relationships so the, the the agents are a key stakeholder for us um really good relationship keep us posted with what's happening on the on market stuff pre-market and off market's an interesting one um 70 of our stuff's actually done off market so no signboard no one knows about it it's all on the hush so Heaps happening like that on the Gold Coast. How do you Coast. find those properties? Like if they're not on the market, by definition, they're not on the market. So yes. how do you find it's not on the market? It's off market, in other words. Bit, yep. So two key ones. First one is uh, agent, real estate agents. Mate, I put it in the simple perspective. If there was a company you could call that did half your job and got you paid quicker, would you utilize, Would you give that person a call? So we're basically that for agents, mate. Some of the agents, you know, if it's a, if it's a bit of a dud listing, you know, it's not presented for sale. Uh, unfortunately, divorce is a common one. Um, people going through a bit of financial pressure is a big one as well, where they might not want to pay for marketing. Mate, they've got an agent. Agent calls us, say, hey, this is a bit of a distressed one. Um, if we could get this done in you know one or two days, let me know. And then we take a buy through. 
hush hush no one knows or all done um and the, the second one is actually direct vendors so there's no agent involved so we've had a fair few of them no vendors agent involved no no vendors yeah. yeah so but how do you find those i mean how do you find someone wants to sell doesn't have a real estate doesn't have a vendor agent yeah but mate uh, we're really fortunate we've got a good pretty good reputation on the gold coast now uh, mate, they'll they'll call my mobile, email oh, us. Really, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Instagram, if, as funny as it sounds, like, mate, I get DMs all the time saying, "Hey, uh, Matt, can you and your team got any buyers? For this, I'm going through this at the moment, or hey, I've got an investment property I want to offload. I'd rather not pay an agent or marketing costs. You got anyone? So, and, the, and you get paid by the buyer. Buyer, no fee involved for the seller. So there's yeah. another little. Yes, they could probably get more if they, if they went to auction and competitive bidding. But one thing I always say is, mate, there's a story behind every dwelling. And sometimes that's that's a, a sick person, a family. Sometimes it's like speed, they need the money for another asset. Sometimes it's they've already found something and they need a certain settlement date. So as you know, mate, it's all, you need to create a win-win scenario for all parties involved. That's, that's essentially what it's all about. And how do you keep your buyer community close to you in other words knowing who the buyers are where they like to buy how much coin they got to spend you know knowing their profile to like units houses townhouses they you know they're looking for a five percent return four percent but how do you keep tabs on all that mm. so i mean the, when we get an inquiry we, we'll basically vet a qualified buyer because in all transparency we can't help everyone and i'm always really big on that up front is Mate, unless we know we can add value, you know, we don't want to waste each other's time. So we'll only work with a set number of like really sharp buyers. So qualified already in terms of finance approved or cash. Uh, they know what areas they're looking in. And then we'll basically pinpoint the certain areas we're going to start targeting for them. And mate, it can range. We've helped first home buyers. We've helped high net worth individuals. Our key thing is, mate, if you're looking on the Gold Coast, um, we can help you. If you're looking outside the coast, we, we can refer you on. Well, so what do we? What do you mean by the Gold Coast? Now we're going down to Coolangatta, or where we up to as far as where Hope Island? I don't know where you at. Yeah, mate, I'd say probably if you looked at uh, sort of the Labrador Southport end, uh, and then we've purchased all the way down to yeah the border Coolangatta. Uh, we've done a bit of rural acreage stuff west of the M1, but most of our stuff is east of the M1. It seems to be high demand, and in all honesty. I'd say seventy percent of our transactions are probably in the pocket Broad Beach to Chugan, I reckon. That that east of the M1. It's all them blue chip gentrifying suburbs, canals, beachfronts. Um, you know, that's where all the new cafes are popping up. So yeah, a lot of city in Melbourne actually all choosing the, the southern end, believe it or not. It used to be the Broad Beach surfers north end. Um, they're definitely I'm noticing a gentrification shift for that southern end. So um what's on fire now? So are we talking about uh, what's what's the suburb on the other side of the, where the casino is? But like go on the beach side, what's Broad it? Broad That's, Beach, it, Mermaid but, Beach, but, but Broad Beach, Mermaid, yeah, a little further down Palm Beach, Palm Beach. Are those areas early. killing it still? Like, as I mean, I, you know, I just found the infrastructure up there is crazy. Like around wild, Broad yeah. Beach, like bars, cafes, yeah. restaurants, everything going, gyms, everything's going on, and it looks quite nice. You know, um, we, we so we've. Gold Coast has sort of moved past Jimmy Raptus and uh, yeah. got its own, own <laughs> other developments now, not yeah, just Jimmy yeah. stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, you've got some nice stuff getting built up there. Yeah. Good views, lifestyle. Or is it is that on fire or, or is it the sort of the areas a bit further south of that where there's better buying and you can get a house and stuff like that, like I, Chugan? Mate, good question. I'll tell you what I've noticed, Mark, since COVID, just after COVID, I noticed a little – um retraction some of the higher supply stuff like the high rises they're still doing well don't get me wrong but it's the suburban houses because what i noticed after covid was this influx of sydney melbourne and brisbane coming to the coast they've still got their job in sydney and melbourne and they're doing pretty much what i did this morning catch a plane down and they're back home maybe that afternoon or on the weekend so um, instead of living in the city where they work they actually live on the gold coast now i love our climate a bit more settled um, they want that bigger block you know for what you can get money wise in sydney versus gold coast is far in comparison so we're seeing that a lot that um, 
they want that suburban lifestyle, you know, nice big block close to the beach. Near golf course. Yeah, near golf course, cafes. I mean, it's been epic. I mean, you ask the Gold Coasters who have been there day one, they're, you know, they're like, oh, these interstate people moving in. But as a Gold Coaster myself, mate, I love it because it's new cafes, infrastructure, spend. Um, our roads are all getting upgraded. So the city's, um, it's now become, um, you know, Australia's pretty much biggest region because we're pretty much a regional city still. So um, yeah, it's super exciting. I think it's I think it's great. But I noticed that after COVID, it was more on, hey, I don't need to uh, live in the hustle and bustle where I work. I can actually work from home. You know, Zoom and Teams and all these things change the environment. And yeah, I can live near the beach and in Queensland where the climate, mate, well, I can still go to the beach in winter. Yeah, well, I, normally, or, sorry, historically. Gold Coast has a bit, been a bit fickle in that property prices because it'll boom up when the boom's on, but it'll crash hard when the mm. when, the, when we things get, uh, get the down cycle comes. But I and then you're gonna then you can also have a lot of unrented places and like yes, basically choose what you want. But people have been telling me that that's not the case in the Gold Coast this cycle. Um, that Gold Coast is holding up pretty well, but but people want to rent there too. People want to live there. Mm. Is that what you're experiencing, mate? I had a look this morning. What are we? Pretty much late March, coming into April. Zero point three percent vacancy rate. That's city less than the total average. Yeah. That's- so I, I always tell people you, you start to become aware of it. Our caravan pa- parks are booked out. Uh, unfortunately, it sounds really sad, but mate, you walk along Burley Esplanade. Every second car park at night is a caravan, mate, and there's two or three people sleeping in there. So it's a really, really sad sight, but also in the same breath, a lot of investors, interstate and local, are yeah, investing as well because mate, the yields are quite still good because the the price entry when you compare it to Sydney and Melbourne versus the yield compression on the the rent returns is actually pretty good. So I mean, we're close to doing a deal uh, at you know he's going to secure it around the two point four. He's going to collect two to um, two thousand one hundred rent per week. Which isn't bad for a for that kind of asset. Yeah. It's so return. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's um it's really interesting. It's in that sort of realm where the returns are quite good. Uh, people love living there, so the demand for rental is strong as well. So it's a crazy. And there's no this is the big one. There's no land because we got ocean to the east, we got hinterland to the west. We're essentially a landlocked city. So the only way is up really. And you know, Mayor Tom Tate, um, he's pretty good. He doesn't flood the city with high rises you know there are certain pockets along the gold coast highway high rises but outside of that it's it's pretty well low to medium density so because i mean like I, I often get on airplanes and and uh I, I i continually get amazed at the traffic air traffic that is i'm talking about <laughs> people traveling to the gold coast um it's it's mental uh and i keep thinking to myself where are they going they're on holidays or you know <laughs> And, and of course, Gold Coast Airport is a lot bigger than it was before. It's just been done up or, or expanded. Um, the car parks are always full. The, the, the car parks at the mm. Gold Coast Airport are always full. Um, the place is just buzzing. Um, have you ever thought, where, where, what, who are these people? Are they on holidays there? Or are they, are they the people you just talked about, people who commute back and forth from Melbourne or Sydney or Brisbane, Melbourne or Sydney, I'd say, um, and, and live in the Gold Coast? But work down those territories i mean who do, have you ever thought it's a why is this joint so busy mm, well it's hard for me well, i'm a queenslander born and bred from brizzy moved down the coast when i started playing nrl at the titans and have stayed ever since wouldn't leave and what you realize is I've, I've been to sydney and melbourne and great cities but if you're what i notice is if you're climate driven or lifestyle driven in terms of um, we're finding a lot more people moving who are escaping the corporate ladder kind of life. Um, yeah, it's a really good city in terms of, yeah, it's very active. Um, people are up at like four or five in the morning going for runs and swims and surfs and stuff. So I'm just finding it's those people who have those lifestyle factors, maybe in those city suburbs now coming in. So a lot of interstate, um, Mate, it's always been a common one. You probably know a lot of people from New Zealand love the Gold Coast yeah. as well. They and love it. Flies direct from New Zealand. Direct, yep, exactly right. So um, that's a common one I see. And then yeah, a lot of holiday homes as well. So um, I see a lot of people all around Australia, and we've bought for some people overseas that 
uh, just secure a lock up and leave, mate. They don't even um, use it half half the time. So there's there's a lot of those people flying in and out as well. So it's an interesting demographic. It's definitely changed because when I was growing up in Brizzy, it was a bit of a tacky place in all honesty yeah yeah Yeah. so it's um yeah it's and it was always boom and bust as well the the market so it's definitely becoming a strong city like mermaid and burley and palmy like there's some high net worth entrepreneurs and sports people and just all these people who have never even considered the gold coast now they they live here and obviously because of my background i know all the footy guys they a heap of them retired who never even played for the titans they all they will live on the coast. They're still not supporting the Titans, though. They? No, they're not, but <laughs> I try to win, win them over. The thing with the coast, though, Mark, I find no one's from the Gold Coast. Yeah. Yeah, no, one, no one's so from the coast. So therefore, everybody's accepted, though. There's no push against anybody. Mm. You, know, you don't feel like, oh, I'm not welcome here. Yes. Because the place is everybody else. It's yeah. from everywhere. And that's a, One of the things I wanted to ask you, though, uh, just, just on that, you mentioned those particular parts of the coast you mentioned that are doing really well. What about right in the middle of surface though? It just hasn't really kicked off. Is, is there opportunity to buy in there because it's a bit unloved? Mm. It, it's, they just they need to fix it up. Something needs to happen there. It, lo- it looked a bit terrible last. I'm talking about surface paradise, like you know, I don't know the names of those streets, but you know, the, yeah, yeah, cavils, yeah, 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 and yeah, 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 yeah. Shit, strip joints. I mean, <laughs> you know, they that just needs to be mm. it needs to needs to be fixed up. Needs or, an uplift, yeah, eh? totally. Yeah. Um, is that is that opportunity? You reckon though? Look, I'd, I'd be more focused on the asset type. I'd be mindful of units and apartments just because of supply increase. There's a lot. Yeah. You I, mean I, in surface? You mean in surface? Or in surface, it? yeah. Right. So I always have a look in easy ones looking at the cranes. You know, you just yeah. have a quick look and they'll give you a quick pipeline of one to two years what's coming on. So and that would be north of surface, like surface and north. Surface and north, exactly. And, and pretty much broad beach to southport, that, that pocket in between. Yeah. in between um look east of the gold coast high it's predominantly high rises so i'd be mindful of you know if you're looking for returns there uh, holiday homes look that's a different story right great opportunities there but mate there's actually some really good suburbs there's a little pocket called buds beach which is just west of gold coast highway that's more suburban um it's in the surface postcode but that's residential homes in there a lot of knockdowns happening in there can't do high rises in there potential like that and as i said some of those neighboring suburbs i call it the ripple effect um broad beach waters sorrento some of these um isla capri those are the suburbs literally a stone's throw away from hustle and bustle surfers you're still close to it but you're seeing a lot of uh gentrification happening so i always like to look at where a where are knockdown rebuilds happening and then I, I i closely look at how much they're spending on the build as well so that's something I noticed in the last 12 months is there's some big players. Um, Tim Gurn is doing a development. Um, Greyer from Brizzy are down here now on the Gold Coast. So um, they're big players. So if they're putting their money into developing the city, you know that there must be something. Starting to change. Something bubbling, yeah. Doesn't that wrong with like uh, getting his car and just drive around <laughs> and like get a, a sense of change or, and sort of think of so well, this, this this area is pretty good i might talk to some of my buyers about having starting to look about look in this particular area like you just mentioned buds beach i mean is that what you do is that one of the things you do yeah for sure mate i, I mean working with so many clients you always are on the run and driving around and the thing with the goldie mate, you can get from one end to the other in 30 minutes so yeah, yeah. it's you know it's it's funny traffic when, lights are in your favor yes. yeah <laughs> and it's funny when we work with sydney and melbourne clients they sort of say as long as we're a 40 minute drive you know between yeah and i was like well you're pretty much covering the gold coast it's, well that's the general rule in sydney 40 minutes and people don't yeah. like to buy beyond that 40 uh, minutes from where we are to the city yeah to the city of sydney so that takes you sort of just past Parramatta or something like that so, yeah um yeah that that's the rule and so they apply the same rule on the gold coast that's, but that as you said that's the whole gold coast it's all, I mean, top to bottom mate I, that's why every time i talk to them, i'm really grateful and, and blessed that Mate, I, I get complained if I'm five, ten minutes away from something. So it's all it's all really accessible. You got the M1 and you got the Gold Coast Highway, and then you got the streets running parallel. It's quite an easy place to get around. So um, it's not like Brisbane and Sydney where there's streets everywhere. It's it's pretty pretty sustainable. And and the big one is you know they got the G Link coming, which is the you know the um, light rail. 
that will be a bit of a game changer, I think, for transportation and getting around. That's already there, the, city. the, the light rail. But you mean the extension? Stage one, yeah, extension of it. Yeah. Exactly right. So that's going to – it stops at Broadbeach at the moment. Um, and as I said, all that migration I'm seeing is happening south of Broadby. So what it's going to do, it's going to basically go right down to the airport. So that's going to connect the Goldie up north to south, which is going to just change the game. It just seems to me that there's been a hell of a – in just a hell of a lot of infrastructure put into the Gold Huge. Coast over the past ten years, like the casino is much bigger. Like you got all the new, yeah. the new stuff going on there, and you know you got lots of um, in terms of amenities. Got lots of new amenities. Got the the, the light rail, as you say. Um, all those old, the university, you know, like Bond University, st still a, it's a they spend a lot. It's of a big one, there. yeah. Um, a lot of people go up there and they never never leave. The young kids, they never leave. Um, it seems to me that uh, infrastructure has sort of come of age, so to speak, in parts of the Gold Coast, whereas yeah. it was always sort of a little bit behind, a little mm. bit lacking behind. You went to the Gold Coast airport and the guy, you felt like you were in de <laughs> you're definitely in a regional airport. It was pretty shitty. Um, but now it's, and you've got all the international flights coming in there now. You've got the international, mm. new international terminal there. Um, you've been watching this stuff happen. Um, have Would you say that, your buyers have become far more interested in the Gold Coast as a, an investment I'm talking about when they're investing as a result of them understanding and watching the infrastructure grow or are they just basically responding to demand for, let's say, rentals? What are, what are your buyers being convinced about? What are they completely convinced about? What's changed their point of view when it comes to buying on the Gold Coast? I reckon two parts. I reckon one part is... They might have come up on a holiday and same thing. They're like, shit, this is actually changing since I last come here. Uh, that's probably number one. They're actually seeing the vibrance of the city and the, the growth. The second part is if you're in it, and we've worked with some astute investors who do do their due diligence, when you look at a map of Australia and just say you, the sweet spot, I think, for the Goldie as an investor is in between the one and sort of two mil uh, as an investor, even slightly above the two million, get some good waterfronts. They need a bit of work. Um, a lot of those investors, when you put that price point on a map and then look at the yield percent return, but also backing on capital growth, so looking at migration numbers, infrastructure spend, employment um, growth, it sort of all leads on a map to the Gold Coast. So that's been a, a big reason why, as you know, Mark, a lot of people. Uh, investors have been in Brisbane for for quite some time, and that's had some good growth. And yeah, it's sort of the ripple effect; it trickles down. So I think Southeast Queensland as a whole, Sunny Coast, Brisbane, Gold Coast. If you look on a map, broadly speaking, it's a pretty good spot to invest for growth plus cash flow. And then when you narrow on a, on a higher level, some of those investors who have got sort of yeah, as I said, one million or two mil to spend, I think it's Gold Coast has got to be up there with one of the best returns for what you actually get as well and Matt, well, what is the uh glow effect that the olympic games going up to brisbane what what's the glow effect that's going to happen to the gold coast yeah it's gonna be unreal i mean some of the parts of the games will be on the coast as well some events which is epic you know it's kind of a, a connected part of the the brisbane game so i think that's going to be huge i think in terms of putting the city on the map from a global stage i think going to be exciting i mean if you're from overseas and you've never even heard of queensland and then you narrow in on brisbane gold coast would be in that conversation so i truly believe and this is I'm obviously a bit biased because i live there but i feel anyone who stepped foot on the gold coast and you've never been there you'd be like wow this this place is am amazing climate what's available and also yeah just the beaches as i said i've been a lot of beaches worldwide i still feel the coast has got to be up there. So it's it's going to be exciting. I think it's going to apply good pressure as a city from a more global status, which is, um, yeah, it's exciting. Well, man, it's been great talking to you. I actually, I actually rate the Gold Coast now as a property destination to buy property. I actually do rate it. I never did 10 years ago, but I do now. Um, I rate Queensland generally, but um, probably Brisbane got a little bit out of control. Mm. Um, yeah, I, but I think Gold Coast probably has a lot more to offer because, as you say, it's limited. It's sort of enclosed. Unless it goes high rise, it can't go any. It can't go further west. Definitely can't go east. Um, it's not going to go much further south because there's a border there. It can't go really that much north either. So, 
it seems to have all the fundamentals right. And as you say, when you look at the data, the data tells you, you know, low unemployment, low vacancy rates, you know, prices, price, uh, the price level is right in terms mm. of what you can borrow today to make it serviceable. So, yeah, Gold Coast is pretty cool. It's, it's got to be on your list of considerations when you look at investing around Australia, particularly on the East Coast of Australia. Matt Srama from the Srama Buyers Group. That was good, on you, mate. good enough. Yeah, good on you, mate. <laughs> thanks, Mark. Well Appreciate done, it. Mate.